have a special guest. There's gonna be a lot of background noise. I have a kitten. What's up guys? So I did a Q&A last year. I figured I would do another one just because I've been kind of away, <clears throat> away from YouTube. Um, so let's get it going with a, another Q&A. I wrote down the previous Q&As that I had um, just to make sure that I don't you know, repeat myself because um, there were a lot of questions asked that I had already um, answered in my previous video. Ma'am, please. So, question number one. Well, I get this a lot. How tall am I? How old am I? Um, and I don't get this one a lot, but I got asked, what is my zodiac sign? Um, what did you just eat? I'm a Leo. I'm five foot four and I am 25 years old. Another one was if I played any sports in school. Um, so this one's kind of funny. My school had wrestling. Um, so they had this thing that was called wrestlerettes. Um, and you don't actually wrestle, but you are more so like you keep scores. So you keep scores of like the takedowns um, and all of that. I was really big into, you know, like MMA since that's kind of my fitness background. Um, so I loved it. I just wanted to always be around it. What else? I did track. Definitely was a sprinter. So I would do like the 100 meter dash. I like doing volleyball. Um, I did it a lot in middle school. And when I got to high school, I was going to try out. All these girls were so tall. Okay, I'm five foot four, which I feel like is average. But like, I guess when you're playing sports, which require you to get up there, you know, they want some tall people. So I didn't even try out because I was like, these girls, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna let you do it and I'm gonna just stay over here. This isn't a sport, but I actually did cosmetology school during my last two years of high school. So I did that at the same time. The next one was um, goals and fitness and life and do they correlate with each other? Um, and when I was answering this in my head, I kind of unintentionally looped it in with another question on here is your greatest life lesson learned on your fitness journey. So basically, I'd say like my goals um, and in fitness and in life is to keep learning and expanding. Like I always have an open mind, um, so I'm not, you know, just stuck on one thing because it's what I always did. I always like to expand my knowledge and learn, you know, like current science and all of that because it's always ever changing and your body is always ever changing too. So all the same, like the shit that you did, um, you know, like when you're first starting, obviously, is completely different to where you are when you're like even middle or, you know, further along in it. So you're always changing, you add muscle, your body's changing, you lose fat, your body's changing. So there's so much to learn and continue to learn in that area. In the past, I had some struggles that I was dealing with mentally. It ultimately led me to lose my passion um, and really my overall interest and want in even going to the gym. With that, it was really hard because I never had gone through, you know, losing that interest or losing that passion of fitness. It's, it's always been my life. Eat, sleep, breathe, freaking training, fitness all day, every day, you know. But honestly, taking a break from it really allowed me to collect and reflect and really learn myself again. Things needed to happen. Being able to step away from fitness kind of put that on pause and it was kind of unintentional because I was just really like depressed I honestly didn't even want to get out of bed I didn't want to do anything I mean I didn't even eat if I'm anxious or anything is going on in my head I don't eat I, I kind of stress my appetite is just thrown off so everything was just kind of thrown off I didn't have the energy I needed to to get into the gym I you know I didn't have that drive I lost that so because certain situations caused that to get lost Honestly, the best thing I did was to reach out. I always have people tell me, you're not alone, you're not alone, I'm here for you. And that just made me like, well, I'm fine, I got this, I can battle through it. Opening up about things like that, I, it, it meant vulnerability. And that's not something that I'm about. I don't like to show pain, I don't like to show hurt. I just 
deal with it. So the life lesson on that is to open up to the people that you, you know, hold closest to you and they feel the same about you. I feel like I had so much of myself was given and sometimes that's it. Honestly, like I haven't been more in tune with who I am. I just finally found myself completely and wholly and I just look at that falling out as a complete blessing. My goal is to just continue to be at this mental state that I'm at and I have such a good grasp on that right now. So that's that. Um, how do you determine what you eat in a day? I don't really track what I eat anymore. At one point I was making it um, a goal to eat like 4,000 calories or even more per day because I was really trying to build. So it, it fluctuates for different goals that I have. Like if I've got a goal in my mind, then my my meals differ like that. So if I'm trying to build, I'm eating more. Um, if I'm trying to lose weight, you know, I taper down. So it just kind of depends on where I'm at, what, what I'm doing. Prep is a whole other situation. Um, that's strict does help. Like right now, I just kind of make it a point to eat, you know, whole foods. I'll have, you know, like a cheat, really whenever I feel like it. Worked out really hard, did legs, whatever, and I'm fiending for some donuts or I'm wanting some pizza. I'll go get it. My go-to, like fast food, so bad. Taco Bell, McDonald's. I know. But I love to go out to eat, but I can do that one of two ways. Some salmon and rice, some green beans, or I can have a fat ass burger. Just kind of depends on what I'm doing. Like right now, I'm kind of just doing what my body wants. When I was eating those 4,000 plus calories per day, I had put on some size. Got up to like 163. I don't think my body likes to be at that size. Watching my body like kind of fluctuate over the years, it likes to stay around like 135, 145. We're kind of just maintaining what we got. Does your fitness lifestyle ever feel like a burden to you? Sometimes, honestly, but not really because I love the dedication um, and I know that the outcome of putting my all into it and I, I know what I'll get out of it. It's, it's not a burden to me at all. You know, I'm going out with some friends and I gotta have my, you know, six pack bag packed with my meals and I gotta go out to my car and eat some cold fish and rice. If I have certain goals, I'll do whatever it, it takes to achieve them and I don't think that it's a burden because it's what I choose. And I look at it as I'm, I'm able to do this. I don't have to do this. Let's see what else. Cardio to weight training ratio. Right now I'm not doing any cardio. You no, know, when I'm like really nailing it down, I'll do cardio, maybe like, ugh. Honestly, I know this is such a dumb reason, but I, I I forget to do cardio. If I'm not on prep and I'm not like tunnel vision, I, I forget. I honestly just don't remember. Like I'll, I'll come home and be like, oh, I wanted to do cardio and I just forgot, okay. What else? Would you ever move out of Arizona? If I would, where would I go? I have no idea. Um, Arizona's home to me. Would definitely love to own a property in California because I've been going to this the San Diego area ever since I was little. So that I know that place like the back of my hand. Just don't think that I would live there, you know, year round or anything. Um, Arizona's home, like I said. Um, I definitely love to travel around, but as far as living somewhere else, I haven't found anywhere that gives me like that home feeling. Our winters are beautiful. Yeah, our summers are pretty brutal, but if you drive, you know, an hour and a half up north, it's 20 degrees cooler year round. If you really want to see snow, you can go up north as well. So we kind of get the best of both. The only thing that we don't get are is like all the seasons. So we don't get to see like the fall gorgeous colors unless you go north again. Do you find social media a hindrance on relationships, uh, friendships? Yes and no, mainly because I feel like it depends on who you are as a person. It just kind of depends on how you go about social media in general. If you're completely consumed by it, then yeah, it's definitely a big issue because you're here just on your phone concerned about, you know, like what you're gonna post or other people it can be, you know, a very pressuring thing. Someone who's 
all like already like an all about me type person it's gonna it's gonna bring that out even more i'll have like some pictures planned or whatever i'll have a caption written out post it i'm done i'm not you know sitting there like scrolling through i'm not worried about you know what is going on with the post i don't care how many people like it i don't care you know it it doesn't concern me i just i just post it and i'm done with it it will it, it can affect relationships around you because if like i said if you're just engulfed in it it just depends on who you are as a person to begin with um like if you're self-centered already then it's gonna bring that out you're not able to give that attention and that love to the people who are right in front of you i don't think that attention needs to be on online all the time i think that you need to pay attention to the people that are in front of you like i said um you know still maintain that social presence but don't let it get to your head basically is what i'm saying all right and that's where i'm leaving it so i hope you enjoyed it and that's it bye guys oh she's biting me arm Ugh.